Good morning, Armor Insiders. Welcome to the morning meeting of our virtual hedge fund. And this ought to be a fun one. Hope you guys are ready for this trading session. Fed cuts 50 basis points yesterday. By the end of this week, we're going to see what we've got when it comes to our risk monitor green signal. So let's talk about how to manage our three separate portfolio styles, day trading, swing trading, investing. First, we're going to start with swing trading. We use our algorithms to execute. That portfolio focuses on index doubles and triples. Okay. So um, we're going to talk about that. It's called the risk monitor. It turns green and we make um, uh, changes to the portfolio. And then we manage that success and that risk as we go forward. I'm going to highlight for you two stocks that are at the top of the armor whiteboard. And they're probably the last two stocks that make it into the portfolio if we add today because we're max long already, and this will be pushing the envelope if I add anything else, okay? But these are the two that I may add, and I'll share them with you um, today. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to add it to the comment section. I'll try to get to that before the end of the discussion if you've got them. Uh, I know most of you meet me in the Slack room, Armor Insiders, and we can talk about it in the Slack room as well. But um, again, don't forget, Virtual Hedge Fund, Chief Investment Officer, Portfolio Manager, we're all you know, in the bullpen right now, having a meeting. You got to figure out what your strategy is, risk tolerance goals, and go and execute that. You have to be the smart money at the end of the day. I'm just going to share with you how I structure my portfolios and how I execute, and I hope it helps. All right. So um, step one, let's look at the S&P. This is the S&P. The risk monitor went green back in uh, on the 12th. Okay. And the market's trying to make new highs. It had um, a reversal yesterday on the Fed news, okay? And um, I shared with you during the day yesterday, we were live for all of you to enjoy um, from around, I guess, 1.30 to the close. And I shared with you that I never read too much in to Fed day trading action. That There is so much zero dated and plus one dated option action in the market right now that it totally clouds real market direction on an on a day-to-day -day basis and this is why we spend so much time talking about using end of day but really end of week stops and what that should really mean in your thought process is end of week decision make because there's so much noise on a day-to-day -day basis that has nothing to do with true direction of the market. This is something that's really uh, ramped up over the last five years. And you have to understand that if you're going to execute correctly. Okay. So yes, yesterday looked like a disappointing reaction to a 50 basis point rate cut. It was, it was right in line with what people were expecting, 50 basis, right? And so you're going to get all kinds of shenanigans during the day. But the real question is, where are we at the end of the week? And let me say that right now, before I break out the party hats, talk about how much money we're making this morning as the market gaps higher. Let me start by saying, as unconcerned as I was yesterday, the market was going down. You know, I'm like this as the market gaps up this morning. Gap ups mean nothing. They're fun. I come in this morning, macro funds up over 4%. That feels great. It means nothing. The close is more important than the open and Friday's close is the most important. Okay. So macro fund, how's it up over 4%? We're long triple the S&P. We're long double the NASDAQ 100. We're long double small cap index. We're long gold and silver. Silver's blowing out right now up about 4% after being down yesterday, right? The mining stocks, you know, I don't know, nuggets up over 5%. So Things are going off like Roman candles. I have to caution you and caution myself. It, it, it means nothing. They could blow out this morning, close down today, and I'll be reducing exposure. So let's talk about risk management. After we enjoy the feeling of gap up, let's talk about risk management. Take a look at the chart. We have two different stop lines, okay? The higher red line in here is the stop that we use based on our um, SPY wing strategy. All we do is we trade SPXL using this strategy. And if we take out the low of two days ago, the trade's over. All right. So if the market's down today, we cut positions down. And if the market takes out the second red line, we go back to risk monitor red and everything's, everything's done. And so market tried to go up yesterday, sold off. Market gaps up this morning. Hey man, if it sells off, it, the market's telling you something, right? So 
Our job here, the reason we're enjoying the gap up this morning is that we executed last week. The macro fund, we're talking about swing trading now. The macro fund gets long indexes, gold, silver indexes. Sometimes we use um, ETFs in that portfolio that are group related. Like we have nugget in that portfolio, twice the performance of GDX. Okay. So we structure that portfolio. We use algorithms to do it and we get rid of all the noise around it. I said to you last week, there's all kinds of reasons why you shouldn't put money to work. Every time you put money to work, there'll be somebody whispering in your ear. There's going to be a Fed meeting. There's going to be a non-farm payroll number. There's geopolitical risk. None of that has any bearing on making money in the stock market. You know why? Because you don't know what the Fed, you don't know what the reaction is going to be to the Fed. You don't know what's going on from a geopolitical point of view. All of that is just fear and it completely ruins managing money. Our job is to get on the right side of probabilities when rewards worth risk. That's it. And we accept the results. If the algos continue to prove out as they have ever since you've been with me, ever since I built them, right? Over a long period of time, we're going to be successful. There will be some times we get stopped out. I'd be having a different conversation with you this morning. Market's gapping down. I'd say, okay, got to raise cash. Took our shot last week. Got to raise cash today. It's got nothing to do with all of the noise around you. If you find yourself making a decision because you think you've read the tea leaves right, you've already lost. You've already lost. Stop doing it. Figure out what your strategy is. Execute your strategy when, when the probability is in your favor, rewards worth risk, and live with the results. That's it. Everything else will leave up to people on CNBC who know absolutely nothing. Okay? So macro fund, swing trading, great morning. I've enjoyed it. Now I'm moving on and I'm a risk manager. Take out the low of yesterday. I have to adjust the portfolio. Anything else is noise. I won't be doing anything else in that portfolio. It's already max invested from last. Let's go over um, special situations and armor invest. Armor invest already maxed out. We've been killing it there and there's nothing to change there. Okay. I have ideas that bubble up on the whiteboard I'd like to add, but I have no cash there. So unless I take something out of the, the Armor Invest portfolio, which I don't see anything reason to do that right now. I'm max invested. So Armor Special Situations got a little bit of wiggle room or I might add a position or two. And these are the top two stocks that are on my whiteboard for addition. Okay. Uber, Uber closes in the green box in or above this green box, the buy box. I'll be long Uber. Okay. This was Uber back here. This was a stage one base breakout pullback. We made money on the stage one base breakout. Now it's pulled back complete with a shakeout below the 200-day the moving average, which I absolutely adore. Shakeout and reverse, just trapped a whole bunch of bears. Breaks this downtrend, stage two base we're breaking out. And it's a pretty good base that goes back to March. So if it closes in that box, I'll be long. If it doesn't, I won't, okay? And the second um, highlighted stock of the day that may end up in the portfolio it might be PayPal. PayPal, as you can see, is in the blue pivot zone, according to William O'Neill. And then what I want to show you here on PayPal, this has been on our list as a turnaround idea, right? We, we talked about it right here in this light green box. I said, this is the first breakout and either it closes in the green box above confirming and I'll get long if it takes out that level or it pulls back to the 50 and I'll get it. It pulled back to the 25-day moving average, and it's trying to break out in here. And this is the downtrend we're looking at. I mean, it's been dead money for a long time. They made an announcement yesterday working with Amazon. They're doing a whole bunch of strategic things to turn around the company. If they can do it, this is just a no-brainer entry point, okay? So that's at the top of my list, right in here. You know, a little bit further down the list, I keep staring at NVIDIA wanting to ask myself, do I want a stage four base breakout? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. We own some Tesla. I could own some more if it closes in that green box. We have to see if it can actually break out. It hasn't done that yet, so that's kind of on the bubble. Um, I talked about CrowdStrike yesterday. I'm not uh, interested in CrowdStrike unless it closes in the green box, but it's on the whiteboard. And we did add CORZ at the end of the day yesterday. I just couldn't help myself. You know, we day traded it. We made some money. Um, I just love this story. There's a lot of insider buying um, and, and I just love the story. So we, I added this yesterday. So other than those things, totally maxed out. And I'm just sitting back and enjoying the ride. Market's going to open higher. No doubt it'll have some shakeouts along the way today. What do I do? So that's the invest side of the portfolio. Macro swing trading is already maxed out from last week. We just enjoy the ride. Special situations, 
a tiny amount of room to stick some positions, but I honestly, I have too many. So I don't know if I'm going to add. And Armor Invest continues to roll along. I don't see anything I'm going to change right now. But if you wanted to know, gee, is there any idea on the Invest whiteboard that I have an interest in, it might, it might be this one. HASI, I've been following this for a long time. Um, the dividend, it's a REIT. The dividend is almost 5%, four and three quarters. Um, it's the energy transition type of sustainable energy uh, infrastructure. I might, I might, if I, if I wanted to make some room in the portfolio, that's where I would go. I would add this name, okay? But that would force me to sell something else. And at the moment, I don't have any desire to do that. So um, let's, um, let's wrap up. Looks like treasuries are down a bit in here. And so I do have a treasury position on. Um, if it holds the uptrend, I hold it. If it breaks it, I'm probably going to use that money for something else, okay? But right now, it's uh, kind of like a, you know, I'm curious if long bonds can keep going up with equities or do they become a um, source of funds for a more aggressive portfolio? We'll have to see. All right. But that's the portfolio uh, as um, as created right now. Any questions you guys have for me, I'm, I'm happy to uh, answer. Um, talking about gold, there's some questions or comments on gold. So here's silver. Right. So silver went down yesterday and closed the gap. Nothing wrong with that. As long as silver is above the uptrend, we're long this asset. And then this morning, it's looking to open around at the top of this tail, somewhere around 1045, 1050. If Sprott Physical Silver can close the week above this downtrend here, above 1050, man, sky's the limit on silver. Take a look at the long term chart of silver. Don't forget, um, this is just starting. If silver breaks out, it's just beginning. And it would have a long way to go to catch up to gold, which started here and skyrocketed, right? So we have our long term capital gains, you know, already in physical gold. And what we do is we trade silver and the mining stocks. So we're back on silver from last week. And we're back on the mining stocks. Okay. Both of which are blowing out and taking out the tails this morning. But you know, who knows? We got to see where we are at the end of the day. Okay. Any other questions you got for me? Nope. All right. All right. We're good. I look forward to seeing all of you on the live desk at uh, 930. We'll get that trade going. I, I, I don't see a carry trade when the market gaps up over 1%. It takes me out of the carry trade when it comes to getting long the S&P, unless the market has a sell off during the day and then it reverses and I want to get on that. I may use the carry portfolio as a, if a short setup occurs, I might put a short on to hedge risk. So I may be using that day trading money for that purpose. So if the market reverses and gives up the entire gap, I may be short. And so while I'm, I'll be at the end of the day, reducing my long exposure, I may be short. I don't expect that to happen. I'm bullish. I think the market's going higher. Okay. But I, when it comes to carry trading on the long side, when the market gaps up over 1%, I generally shut off that decision unless there's weakness that I want to buy. All right. Everybody have a wonderful trading session. Armor um, Insiders, 930 on the live desk. Report subscribers. You're on your own now. Feel free to throw a question in the comment section. Uh, anybody who feels they need a little more um, hands-on and would like to work together with me, I'm happy to do that. Give me a phone call and we can chat and see if that relationship makes sense. At the end of the day, everybody, don't forget, whatever I say, whatever you hear out there today, you have to think about your strategy, execute that strategy, and be the smart money. Have a good day trading.